Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call today's meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, January 24, 2012. We're in the Village Boardroom for the Village Board meeting, uh, which will be followed by a committee of the whole meeting. It looks like it's about 7.02 p.m. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and Okay, Hope uh, is subbing in for Kathy. Kathy will be a little bit late this evening. Would you please call the roll? Certainly. Mr. Gattuso? Present. Mr. Novak? Present. Mr. Perry? Present. Mr. Sloan? Present. Mr. Stecker? Present. Mr. Yurkovich? Present. And Mr. Puglia? Present. We do have a quorum. Okay, our first item... Um, any presentations? I'm sorry. No presentations this evening. No. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. All right. Any public comments and questions? Public comments. Please step up to the microphone. Introduce yourself for our acting uh, clerk this evening, Hope. Good evening, Steve Battersby, uh, 1905 Delmora. Uh, Sam, I had a couple of questions about a couple of items that are on uh, tonight's agenda. I brought this up with uh, the last meeting about the waste management contract that's up for re renewal tonight. Did uh, would anybody find out what the price of an additional can would be to a, to a resident? Was, is that a question that was asked? Oh, oh Matt's right. here. I'm sorry. Yeah. An additional can, yeah. No, the big, the big one. Before I, I called, years ago I called and they wanted 50 bucks. So what, is that that much of an improvement? Or? How much? Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant to purchase one. Purchase one, I have to go back and check. Okay. So I, I, thought, I figured it was probably in the contract, and that was something that could be negotiated that residents might be able to get a better price on cans at, at renewal of contract time than they would at any other time. And the other question about waste management was the previously you had, uh, the board had talked about possibly getting big containers for leaps uh, pickup instead of using bags. Was there any consideration given to that uh, in this contract? No, I don't believe that that was uh, was even discussed. Uh, to be honest with you, no, Mr. Is that, Mayor. Is that never going to be discussed? We're just going to stick with leaf bags. Do you think that maybe eventually we might get big cans for leaps? Um. The topic wasn't discussed, so uh, I think we're sticking with the leaf bags and the uh, $10,000, uh, I would say gift, but the uh, rebate back to the village was used for that leaf bag purchase. Okay. And, and then a, a yeah. question on the engineering contract that you're, is on the agenda tonight. Um, this kind of reminds me of the one, uh, <coughs> the similar one that D3 had for the north side of town. I think it was about 60000 uh, bucks for the sanitary sewers on the north side. Uh, did that go anywhere, or is that still in the hopper somewhere, or what's, what's the status of that? I'm not, uh, I'm not recalling. Any board member recall anything for the north side? It, it wasn't side. the north side. It was for the entire village, but they picked the two worst sub-basins yes. and, did, and did identified all the items that needed to be corrected in those areas, and I think the cost was $4 million or something like that. 
But I know there was uh, uh, two basins out of the ones that uh, that we have in town that were identified by uh, staff and the engineers as needing the most work, like Trustee Sloan had mentioned. So that was part of that uh, mitigation piece that, that V3 was doing. Right, it was two so, bases out of five. I guess there's yeah. five total in the village and you paid yeah. them to, to do two. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you already you spent the six, I'm pretty sure it was 60 grand on this survey, but mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything about any work occurring as a result of that survey. So is that just not going anywhere or where are we at with that? Well, I mean, as always, we're certainly searching for funding to try to, uh, you know, complete all the projects that we have. Um, there's certainly enough of them out there. Uh, so the, way, the way I yeah. kind of tied into what's on the, the engineering study that's on tonight's agenda is it, it seems to me that you're putting this one ahead of the previous ones. And you're going to be spending maybe a million or two million bucks on this, on this tonight, and then... Uh, You've already, you know, you already have a survey that you could act on this previously. Well, I know this, this sanitary sewer line was never cleaned. All the other ones in town were clean. This one we couldn't even get to look into because of its location and size and scope. So this is something that, uh, you know, certainly needs to be addressed. Um, when we apply for the IEPA loans, low interest loans and grants for whatever projects that we apply for, um, you know, you don't know when you're going to get them and how long it's going to take to get. Um, but this is one section of, of pipe that has not even been looked at to see what it needs or, you know, what has to be done. And uh, I think in the meetings we've had with the county and, and other interested parties that it appears that the uh, best course of action would be the relocation of this, which, you know, has a couple million dollar price tag, at least at this point in time. So we've never even looked at this. Um, it does take in a uh, quite a big expanse of the village as well, somewhere in the neighborhood of, say, Fleet Street and west of Wolf Road that, uh, you know, that's going into MWRD that we don't know what problems it has. And, uh, you know, at least the other ones have been looked at. Well, I, that kind of brings up another question is how come you haven't looked at this, uh, into the sewer? I mean, it, as we mentioned before, couldn't you drop a camera down a manhole? No. Or at least get some idea. No, you have to go to the oh, no. the 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 synopsis that was up here last at the last meeting when they discussed this showed that there were three manhole covers on this line. So I would think if there was three manhole covers, you would be able to access that line at some point and, and take a look at that. Is, is that not correct? Uh, from what we were told, that the uh, the access of getting the camera and the in the trucks over that area is prohibited. Well, you, you don't have to have a truck to get a camera down a manhole, though, do you? Can no. you just don't, don't they have portable devices that you can? Look into a manhole with, with, yeah. without a truck? I, you know, honestly, I don't have an answer to your question. If there is something, um, we were told that this could not be cameraed without, um, you know, without the trucks being over the top of it. That's what I recall. Okay. Well, my, my concern would be that you're, I, I think you need to do sewer repairs, the sanitary for sewer repairs first <clears throat> on the section you've already surveyed, which is the north side of the town, which was hit worse. Uh, by the floods uh, than, than the area that you're, you're at now, as far as I saw. And I, I think you have to be spending money and borrowing money up, up there first before you go to, to the south side. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Nice to see everybody again. I've been away. Um, I'd like to talk about, I'll be very brief in the interest of um, getting out of here on time. Uh, I'm Timothy Hinsdale. I'm a resident of Westchester. I attended the Economic Development Committee meeting this past Monday. I'm actually a frequent attendee at this meeting. Uh, sadly, I'm usually the only public member ever there. And it really dismays me that uh, no one else comes to that meeting, particularly that there's other than the sitting member on the committee who represents the Chamber of Commerce, there has very rarely ever been a chamber member who's ever attended that meeting. And I think that's a sham. Uh, at this last EDC meeting, uh, Hope Garrett was advising the committee on their roles and responsibilities to comply with the Illinois Open Meeting Act. And I'm very heartened that the village is taking that seriously. It's something that I think is very important to, for the village to operate openly. And I hope that this is a harbinger of other committees and boards 
will also start adhering to that Open Meetings Act. And um, I'd like to know if the Westchester Fest Committee would fall underneath the same rules as those other committees. The reason I ask that is, having looked up the Open Meetings Act, I find that it says that the public bodies that receive, to quote, which are supported in whole or in part by tax revenue should be compliant with the Open Meetings Act. And you know, that's kind of a hybrid kind of committee. You know, it's a part of the private from the uh, uh, chamber, and it's another elected body. So I was just wondering if that would also fall underneath it. Mr. Hinza, it's my understanding that that uh, committee is a chamber committee and that the village has a representative on it. And okay. the village does make a donation uh, to that activity but it's not a village body or a subcommittee of the village board or something similar to the EDC where the village appoints all of the members to it. So it wouldn't technically fall under the Open Meetings Act okay. and be governed by that. It would be like if the village gave money to the Boy Scouts for a project and had a liaison to the Boy Scouts. We couldn't force the Boy Scouts to operate under the Open Meetings Act. So, okay. well, then I guess it would mean that that the liability for that um, event falls on the chamber then too. With the village doesn't have any liability. I don't know the answer as to whether the village purchases as part of its donation a, uh, a liability insurance policy. No, no, strictly the chamber. It's the chamber okay. then. So, all right. Well, thank you very much. That mm -hmm. was my question. And I, again, I'm, I'm very happy to see the uh, the big the big screen TVs and. Uh, can we come here on Sunday for Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> I think there, you'd want a bigger be a, screen than that. There'll <laughs> be a charge. <laughs> there'll be an admission. Anyone else? Please step forward. Nothing? Okay. Okay, there's no public hearings. Uh, number seven, the consent agenda. There's items A through H, record of bills, approval in the minutes of the December 13th COW, ordinance to approve contract renewal with waste management, ordinance to approve an increase in water rates, ordinance to approve revised liquor code, resolution to approve flood mitigation plan, um, resolution to indemnify in situ form for sewer repairs of 1423 Hydorn, and a resolution to approve a change order for in situ form as well and their contract for a sewer repair at 1423 on High Dorn. Uh, does any person need anything pulled? Trustee Novak. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to uh, pull the um, resolution to approve flood mitigation plan and actually shelve that for now. Okay. Uh, it table it at this point? Table time? it, yes. Okay. Anyone have a problem with tabling that uh, issue? We need a motion. Uh, motion? You're going to remove it from the uh, consent agenda uh, okay. and then after you act on the consent agenda, we'll take a Ta motion to, to table, table it. it. Okay. okay. Are there any other things that need to be pulled or discussed? Anything? Okay, with that being said, items A through H with the exception of G, is there a motion in a second to? Oh, it's F. F. The exception F. of F. Oh, exception of F, I'm sorry. Um, is there a motion to approve all those with the exception of F as in Frank? Motion so moved. By? Second. Frank and Nick. Hope would you please call the roll. Mr. Novak. Aye. Mr. Perry. Aye. Mr. Sloan. Aye. Mr. Stecker. Aye. Mr. Yurkovich. Aye. Mr. Gattuso. Aye. Mr. Puglia. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, with respect to item F, the resolution to approve the flood mitigation plan, is there a motion a second to table that plan till the future? So moved. Second. Trustee Novak and Brian. Trustee Sloan. Okay, all those in favor of, of tabling that to another time, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone uh, against, say nay. The motion carries as well. And I, uh, you know, Wally, uh, if you can, five seconds on why we're tabling it. We're 
putting it part sure. of a bigger plan. And we had a meeting with the um, National Flood Insurance Plan our program this mo uh, all day today, and um, one of the requirements I thought was to have a flood mitigation plan um, to be a, a member of the CRS, which is Community Ranking System. And actually, what the requirement is is to have a multi-hazard plan, which involves the flood plus many others, which we are currently working on. So my thought is, instead of bringing a component, we will just uh, bring the whole multi-hazard plan to the board to vote on um, in COW and then uh, two weeks later to uh, put to vote. So that's why we move that. And the, uh, I have to say that the, the plan was very well written by, uh, by Trustee Novak and, and staff and others that worked on that plan. Yes, it was a group uh, of people that worked on it. It yes. was a, a very enlightening meeting today at, at best. I could recap it. To obtain uh, our, our rating, so. Okay, with that being said, before we jump into the active agenda, which we have uh, two items on, I would respectfully request that uh, we go into executive session for a few moments for the purpose of an appointment of an officer and compensation of an officer. So if we could move item 13 up to before 8, and then we'll come back in the session and, and finish up the board meeting and then the the uh, committee of the whole. <coughs> Is there a motion to so do that? So, so moved. Second. Motion by Nick. Second by Wally. Roll call, please. Hope. Mr. Perry? Aye. Mr. Sloan? Aye. Mr. Stecker? Aye. Mr. Yurkovich? Aye. Mr. Gattuso? Aye. Mr. Novak? Aye. Mr. Perry? Me. Sorry, Aye. Mr. Puglia. Aye. Motion carries. Right, we're going to go into the other room for an executive session to talk about the issue as presented, and we shall be right back. Miss Hope, you ready to fly, dear? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, call the meeting back to order. like to uh, call our board meeting back to order again today's Tuesday January 24th looks like it's about four minutes to uh, eight o'clock hope call the roll please <coughs> mr. Sloan here mr. Stecker here mr. Yurkovich here mr. Gattuso present mr. Novak present mr. Perry present mr. Puglia present we have our quorum again, and we're back at, at the meeting. Our item number eight, under, excuse me. Should do that. Staff can do it. Okay. Um, our first item on the active agenda was a motion uh, for authorizo authorization to negotiate the scope of services and engineering contract for the Sunnyside Sanitary Sewer, sewer Relocation Project. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Wally? Second. Second. Frank. Okay, discussion. Uh, I wasn't present for the, uh, the last meeting, but apparently there were some questions regarding uh, the uh, the scope of work proposals that were made by each of the three vendors that being Hancock v3 and and Burke um, apparently from what I understand there was a question relative to uh, one of the contracts where there was a potential unknown cost of some soil borings do, do I have that correct yes mm -hmm. that there was uh, some information on that um, has staff yep. learned the information um, yes, we did contact Burke, and they gave us the quote of $4,500, which uh, amended their proposal to $89,152. Um, but at, at this point in time, we are, want to look at the qualifications of the firms without necessarily respect to the dollars. Um, what we're looking to go forward with is selecting a firm to prepare the design engineering plan. Um, we did analyze the firm's hours, projected hours, for development of these plans, and uh, they were ranked 
at Christopher Burke at 700 hours, Hancock Engineering at approximately 1,100 hours, and V3 at approximately 1,400 hours. Um, we would like the board's recommendation on a firm to go forward. All three of these firms are very qualified and uh, all have relevant IEPA experience, um, but upon uh, recommendation of the board, we would go forward and negotiate the pricing uh, with the selected firm um, to develop that plan. I did have an opportunity to, uh, to look at, at the proposals, and I have to say um, um, they all were very well done and they're very qualified firms as that. Um, what I did look at and certainly uh, saw there seemed to be a lot of municipal experience um, as far as work being done, whether it be water main projects in the local area of, of, of uh, Hillside and Berkeley um, and other communities as well that uh, I think Christopher Burke's firm seemed to have a host of more municipal uh, experience under their belt. That was just my observation from going through their packet the other day. Um, so uh, I guess it, at the end of the day, they do appear to have the most relevant experience of design um, for this project for the village and presented in the most conservative scope of services to meet the minimum requirements of the project. Um, I think the project in its scope, and as I looked at this, because I know I was the one that brought this to the forefront in as much as that there was no uh, wholesale cleaning of this pipe. We don't know what the condition is the pipe is. The MWRD indicated in a, a meeting that we were out there with Forest Preserve that there's probably at least, based on age alone, eight inches of silt in that, uh, in that pipe. Um, we're talking about taking a pipe and either running it backwards for X amount of feet to Sunnyside, down Sunnyside Avenue, whether it's in the street or in the parkway, to 31st Street on the easement, down the bike path with uh, Forest Preserve permission and approval and whatever we may need from the Village of LaGrange Park and attach to a, uh, uh, an existing manhole. There's two of them on either side of the creek right around Jackson and Brainerd. Um, that's pretty much the scope of, of the operation. So, you know, I think the minimum requirements, obviously obtaining the uh, uh, the necessary permits from the Forest Preserve District, from potentially Village of LaGrange, any environmental impact uh, situations as well, are, you know, should be part and parcel to uh, an operation like this. I, uh, uh, you know, the original project may have looked at uh, damaging some trees as a 20 foot easement on our side of uh, 31st Street as well, all the way out to, to uh, to Wakefield or 28th Street there and the uh, environmental impact alone to the Forest Preserve dif District and their, uh, um, their angst against that was, was quite evident in all the meetings that we've had with the uh, superintendent of the Forest Preserve District as well. And uh, as we talked about it and, and came up with the, uh, the path that we thought would be the path of least resistance and actually one-tenth of a mile shorter than one of the, uh, the other proposals in ripping up Brainerd Avenue. So it, as I looked at these, they're all qualified firms. They all have uh, good people that are working for them, but I did uh, notice quite expansive repertoire of engineers uh, that did municipal experience in the, in the Burke presentation. Um, and the number of hours, 723, to get the job done, to me, I, I, I guess I don't see the big project. So that, that's just my opinion. Mr. President, yeah. the, the nature of the motion is to negotiate the scope of services and to negotiate the engineering contract. The contract and the scope would then have to come back to the board right. for approval, but you need to designate who you're gonna enter into those negotiations yeah. with. I, I heard you discussing uh, Burke, but the motion itself doesn't have that in there yet. So you need to okay. put a firm name into the motion that's before the board. Okay, so uh, Wally and Frank has the motion to authorize and negotiate the scope of services and engineering contracts for the Sunnyside Sanitary Sewer Relocation Project with, with 
I would ask, and I'm not speaking for you, you could certainly pull your motion if you'd like, with the recommended firm of Burke Engineering. Is there any removal of? The, the only question is going back, and I was actually the last meeting, probably the one that started with the, I was confused. Um, this piece looking at uh, the 723 hours, 1100, 1400 hours and 1100 hours, so I would take 723 hours as the cheapest contract? Would that, would, would that be making the assumption? Uh, there would be an assumption that given most engineering firms have somewhat comparable rates that we would incur less cost with fewer hours. Because we've voted on other contracts that agree that they're all qualified. And in lieu of everything being qualified, we then have to take the cheapest contract. I mean, that's what we've done in the past when we've ran into those issues. So, yeah, I don't have a problem if it is the gets the job done and the cheapest contract. But along we're, we are, are we looking at apples and apples or apples and limes? Because that was the big question last time was so like what the heck are we looking at? How many apples are we paying for is the way I would put it. You know, Do you need as many apples? Well, that goes to the, the cheapest contract proposing. then. Yes. They're all qualified. Um, if Chris Burke is the cheapest contract, fine, but... Well, let's say, uh, yeah. Brian has a question, so we'll get the question out. You know, just looking at this with the, the number of hours, looking, having, uh, you know, read the, the proposals, I'm not an engineer, so I really don't understand the differences between the, the different proposals as far as, you know, is there something in the, uh, the Burke design proposal that they're missing? Is there something that's in the V3 that they shouldn't have? Um, you know, there's such a vast difference here and not understanding those differences, but yet looking at the number of hours, um, it seems there's such a large disparity. Again, I, I just, I don't understand why we have, you know, we're basically going, okay, we've got the cheapest price here. We're going to go out, now we're going to renegotiate the scope of the project, and that scope may change everything that's in here. A and, you know, to me, it's like if, if you, for example, were to take something that's in the Hancock proposal or the V3 proposal and say, oh, gee, yeah, we really should have done that aspect of the project and add it to the scope, you're... You, you're really giving an edge to somebody who underbid and underscoped a project, and you know I just I just don't know that this is that this type of uh, evaluation that's being done right now is the most prudent. Um, I just I don't understand how we can spend 400 more hours or 700 more hours on what should be a similar project and how the scopes could be so vastly different. I'm not an engineer, so you know I, I don't understand all the intricacies there, but to just sit here and look at price, it's, it, to me, I look at it like a, you know, going to a, do construction and, and the GC comes in and low balls the number to get in the door. You get to negotiate everything, and then with change orders and add-ons, you end up at the same price. And as you know, I think the comment was just made, the engineering firms tend to have similar rates, so if it ends up that the project does need 1,100 hours instead of 700, then we're going to be somewhere in the middle where the uh, Hancock <coughs> bid was. If it takes more, we're going to be back up where V3 is. So I, I just I don't like the idea that we're picking this based on price. I think we should have been looking at the scope itself and having a discussion with the engineers to find out what the best scope is and why, and then discussing the you know the price. I think you know we we've put the cart before the horse again here. Yeah. Are you going to do that now? With Burke? <coughs> yeah. Negotiate the scope. Okay. You know, unfortunately, uh, from my vantage point, it's you have a professional operation whether it's professional services and I think in the past that there may have been one village engineer who basically you trusted their operation you trusted their their work and there was no 
wholesale, I would say, pitting against one another at all. It was, uh, this is the law firm. Um, you know, you can make the analogy that, that, that Mike's firm negotiates the, the contract for the police department. He's our village attorney. Well, there's nothing to say that we shouldn't have another village attorney on, on site with a professional relationship of sorts. And you could flip back and forth. And that's kind of where we're at. We have three qualified firms all bidding for, for jobs. And it's not a sealed bid where you say, you tell me how much it's going to cost to put this line in. You are and you are and you tell me what you're going to do. At the end of the day, we just want the line in and obviously for it to work properly and, uh, you know, without a problem. I see this type of situation continuing when we have any projects out there where we have three qualified firms that we're looking to engage in some type of, of service because we all know they're qualified. They all have done work for a number of municipalities. And uh, I think what Mike is saying is we have to pick a company and then negotiate some of the scope of services. They certainly have the uh, what we're looking for. Um, and I don't know, is it a, is it a crapshoot that it, the prices the may increase um, to a different level of another company? But then again, you don't know if the other company would have a change that would raise that price. So y you don't know where you put yourself. So I certainly empathize with uh, the situation at hand. Uh, we have three qualified firms, uh, one indicating 700, one 1100, one 1400. I don't think that, that any of them enjoy a reputation of, of lowballing anything or anybody to uh, obtain an upper hand on anybody else. I think that that's what they believe that they can do this job for. And, uh, you know, we, sh we have to trust our people, and I think we trust all of them. So with that being said, there's a motion to second on the floor with Burke Engineering. I hear uh, both Wally and Frank indicate that that that's the company for whatever reasons. And if there's any more conversation, I'd like to hear it. If not, um, Hope, call the roll. Is there anything else? No, no, okay. Mr. Stecker. Aye. Mr. Yurkovich. Aye. Mr. Gattuso. Aye. Mr. Novak. Aye. Mr. Perry. Aye. Mr. Sloan. No. Mr. Puglia. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Sam, and I'm sorry. Just for the record, I'm not voting against going out and discussing and negotiating with, with Burke Engineering. I didn't like the process that this followed, so that's the purpose of my no vote. We do need the hammer on okay, the item number B under the active agenda. <coughs> I'll accept the motion to appoint Janet Myathize as our village manager and to approve the employment agreement that we've discussed. Is there a motion and a second for that? So moved. Second. Brian? And <coughs> Tommy? Any discussion on that? If not, Kathy, please call the roll. Or hope. Or I'm sorry. I saw Kathy I sneak she, yeah, in. I thought I saw her. She's behind her. Okay. Oh, Hope call the roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Yurkovich? Aye. Mr. Gattuso? Aye. Mr. Novak? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. Mr. Sloan? Aye. Mr. Stecker? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Puglia? Aye. I don't want to say congratulations, but congratulations. Uh, you have a uh, on this task uh, ahead of you. Um, you have the full support of, of the Board of Trustees and myself and all the staff that's here. Uh, since you were hired in uh, July as the finance director, I know you've uh, taken that challenge very well and supplied the necessary data and financial stuff to the best of your ability while trying to work through some challenging uh, information or lack of information that had to be recreated. Um, to get you off and running. And I know um, with you 
handling part of the audit with your experience in the auditing field, that you've made sure that, uh, that no things are unturned in that area, and I know that your selection of the finance person will be someone of similar or equal caliber of yourself. So um, on behalf of myself and certainly the board that's been working with you since July, and uh, in your stead as village manager since October, um, welcome aboard. We look forward to uh, working with you and hope that there's a, a, a long tenure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now <laughs> managers report that you resigned, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, first I uh, would absolutely like to thank uh, President Pooley and the board for their confidence in me and I think we've been, uh, been doing a lot in the last uh, few months to move things forward in the village, make some positive changes uh, through efforts with the municipal aggregation referendum that's coming up and um, our home rule sales tax referendum that we have coming up to try to raise funding to improve our roads. Um, we're, we've got a lot of things on the plate. We're, we're looking forward to improving the overall uh, quality of life here in the village and I'm very happy to be your new village manager. <coughs> Thank you. Um, on, a, on another note, I uh, would like to remind everybody that the village of Westchester is working on its comprehensive plan and would like everybody to participate in their process. The comprehensive plan will build upon the village's assets to address current local issues and provide a roadmap for achieving long-term goals. In that um, vein, all residents, business owners, community leaders, and other stakeholders are invited to participate. There will be a meeting Thursday, February 2nd from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m at the Westchester Community Church, 1840 Westchester Boulevard. Uh, we encourage everybody to attend and give us your thoughts on this process. Um, on a final note, I would like to congratulate President Puglia, who was recently awarded uh, one of five Illinois presidential citations uh, awarded by the Illinois Association of School Board Officials. So um, congratulations, President Puglia. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was caught uh, blindsided by uh, the superintendent of the schools the other day, uh, Jean Sophie, with, with that award. And I think it culminated as the uh, consolidation of school districts was going forward that uh, I attended the, uh, the statewide meeting up in Oakton, um, this plains at Oakton College, and, and spoke about um, my tenure on the board as a uh, a school board member and uh, some of the things that uh, maybe the school district or the school wasn't or the uh, national or the state school board wasn't thinking of when they're talking about consolidating schools there's a lot of factors that impact children and, and certainly Wally would know this as a school board member as well that uh, you know that the kids come first and that's kind of the, the, the package that I I package for them so but Thank you to everyone as well. Mr. Attorney, anything for the... No, I made my report in executive session. Thank you. Okay. Board members, <coughs> reports. Um, right. Wally, start out. Yeah, I'd like to start out with the uh, mentioned earlier about our uh, meeting we had today. Um, I'm pleased to announce that, uh, just a little brief history on the community ranking uh, system, that you, through a lengthy process, um, it's been about two and a half years going through this process. Uh, when Westchester gets a ranking by the National Flood Insurance Program, that allows our residents to get a discount on their flood insurance. The ranking depends on the, uh, the percent or the discount depends on your ranking. We had a meeting today, which was the end of the process, and we were given a ranking of tentative ranking, let me put that, of eight. Um, which allows a 10% discount on our flood insurance. So any residents starting uh, October 1st um, uh, will see a, if their premium is a renewable 10 one and older, will see a 10% discount on their insurance. Now, I like to say this is tentative. We still have a punch list to go through. We still have a multi-hazard plan to uh, finish and submit, but I don't really see a problem in that. Um, 
we also have an opportunity to increase that ranking. We're not stuck at eight. So as it moves seven, as it moves six, it moves five, that just means more money off the premium. But this is a great start. Uh, congratulate staff, uh, Mr. President, who was, uh, got us extra points because he was uh, fudging around with his computer. Uh, but it was a great effort, and uh, we're just going to move forward now yeah. and get more money in the residents' pockets. Thanks. EDC. Well, Janet stole most of what I was going to say about <laughs> February 2nd. However, um, we're still taking the surveys at numerous locations, Paulie's Restaurant, my restaurant. I know PNC's got one. Most of the banks in town have a suggestion box to put these in. You could also find the suggestion uh, forms on the back of the last newspaper or any of the locations around town also have the forms to be filled out. You can fill them on right there and stick them right in the box. All the information is very important and for us. They're also at the library and we do have a survey box um, at the front counter village hall as well. There you go. So anyone that hasn't filled out a survey, please do today as well. CAB, anything? Oh, I'll keep it for um, the cow because I got that. Okay. And I know we're going to talk about the fest, so we'll, we'll wait that. Brian, anything? anything? Yeah, a week from tonight, uh, the uh, personal locator program will be launched by the township. Uh, there's a meeting in um, LaGrange Park. Uh, or it might be actually the Grange, the Aging uh, Connection Center. Uh, next Tuesday, I think it's in the afternoon, but they'll be launching the personal locator program next week. So uh, we got that moving forward. Great. Thank you. Uh, board member, uh, a couple of things. I, I do want to thank uh, Durkin, Romello, and Storino for their generous gift at Christmas time, and also Hancock Engineering as well. Um, to uh, different uh, venues in town, the Lions Club and the, the Food Pantry. Um, it's very well accepted. I do have a report here from the uh, Police and Fire Commission that I'll certainly share with the uh, committee of their activities of the year. We could probably scan this and get this off to um, all the trustees in that and put it for public review as well on what the Police and Fire Commission has been doing over the last year. So I'm going to tender that to Janet. I did receive some information relative to the Westchester Police Pension Fund Board of Trustees performance report of the fourth quarter. I will also give this to, uh, to Janet and make this available as well for any of the entities uh, and people that may want to take a, a, a peek at how the police pension fund is doing. Um, you know, I'd like to figure out a way because this is the second time that I can recall that we seem to be, I don't want to say willy-nilly, but not in the same mental frame over handing these engineering contact or contracts out. There has to be a better way. Uh, and not to say that uh, uh, you know, we did anything incorrect or improper. <coughs> But I guess I'll, you know, I'll just ask Mike. When other boards are doing these things, when there are multiple um, engineering people, I don't want to say bidding, but vying for that process, are we doing anything different than other communities do? Or is there a better procedure that we could follow up front so we're all pretty clear when, uh, when it comes to looking at these things? It, it, what? What do other towns do that, that uh, you know, are bettering the process? The, the whole idea is to, to better this and get, A, the most bang for our buck, and to get the project built the right way. And those are the, the two criteria that I think everybody on this board um, subscribes to. So is there any, well, what I've seen any is, advice, sir? What I've seen is uh, generally uh, two different approaches. Either the municipality has an engineer on staff that basically defines what the scope of these projects are and um, then puts it out uh, for uh, proposals and everybody is, uh, knows what the parameters of the project are. Um, or, uh, as you alluded to earlier, uh, many municipalities just have one engineering firm 
that they deal with. Um, the, the problem that was confronted here was putting it out to three different engineering firms and asking each of the firms, well, what would be your approach? What would be your approach? And then the third firm, what would be your approach? And there's three different approaches here, obviously. So um, some attention needs to be, be made towards better defining what that scope is um, if you're going to invite, you know, more than one firm uh, to respond to your request for a proposal. So uh, they're all on the same project, the same parameters. So it's almost like you have someone that has knowledge of, of engineering that has no interest of, say, bidding on the project to put the projects th together and then throw that scope out there and then that's have the those That's an in-house engineer approach. The other is if you just have one engineer doing your work, you tell them what you want done and then you have trust or confidence in them that they're going to tell you, well, here's what I think you need Should to be. do uh, for this project. So, okay. all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can. So, thank you. Thank you. Executive session, we already handled that at this piece. I believe we're going to have one after the, uh, at the conclusion of the COW as well. Um, is there a motion a second to adjourn the board meeting? Motion by? So moved. Second. Tommy and Nick, all those in favor of adjourning the board meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposition, say nay. We are adjourned.